Actually, that would be a bad question to ask the Philippines because tower densities are one of the lowest in, in, in Asia and the world. I think Ghana has more towers than the Philippines. Now, having said that, millimeter wave. If you're looking at cell site densities, small cells of 150, 200 meters, right? So that's going to be a lot of small cells. And us, we love to sell fiber to the small cell operators, okay? But having said that, today when we see 5G signals, and it's not even millimeter wave, the speed is decent, right? 100, 150 meg. Latency is acceptable, 12, 13 milliseconds. On our fiber, we do 2 milliseconds, by the way. Now you do millimeter wave, your um, radius is quite small. Okay? So I think from a serviceability perspective, you're still probably better off with legacy LTE or, you know, um, 5G on the 3 point something megahertz band, a gigahertz band. Second is uh, we're a tropical country. So, you know, rain profiles are not going to be uh, uh, attractive. And then finally, can they actually provide unlimited capacity, same as we can do on fiber? Definitely a whole lot more bandwidth. But today, what we're seeing in, in the Philippines is that uh, nobody can still offer unlimited. At some point, you're going to have too many customers because you attracted them and no capacity to serve. So it's, it's never flown. Um, millimeter way, probably Philippines, a long way to go. And even the incumbent operators doing traditional 5G, still a long way to go. A very important data point, no? Last quarter was the first quarter that fixed broadband wireless subscriptions actually declined in the Philippines. And the two operators are saying, well, driven by fiber migration. So, very interesting insight there.